Hey man, Pro Tools just released one of its biggest updates ever with enhancements for both music production and audio post-production. This update includes an integrated Dolby Atmos renderer, which is gonna make mixing and immersive audio easier than ever before. This update also brings enhancements to Pro Tools Sketch, markers, memory locations. They even added color in the IO setup dialog box. Same support bouncing for H.264 video and so much more. Let's jump into it. So the first thing that I want y'all to do before you ever update anything, before you ever update your Pro Tools is make sure that you check the compatibility. This is so important. To do this, I always just go to my Google browser and I type in Pro Tools compatibility. It's that easy. Once you're in that Pro Tools compatibility, you wanna simply click on that first little thing that pops up, Pro Tools operating system compatibility chart. You wanna go there because it's super important. You don't want to update your Pro Tools system without being 100% certain that your computer and everything else is gonna support that. So let's just look here. The current version of Pro Tools that just updated yesterday was 2023.12, all right? That's, you know, obviously that's December, the 2023-12, all right? And they are promising to give us brand new enhancements with new features every quarter, all right? Compatibility for Mac OS is the latest version of Mac OS Monterey 12.7X, the latest version of Mac OS Ventura 13.6 dot whatever, okay? Please note that Pro Tools is not yet qualified with Mac OS Sonoma 14 Plus due to a number of known issues. So you can click there if you've already updated to the Sonoma version, then you can go and find out what those known issues are. If you want a Windows system, Windows 10 uh, release 22.h2, and then Windows 11 23.h2. So you'll be compatible if you are running with any of these machines, all right? So any of that, you'll be good to go. Other than that, you might run into some issues, so be very, very careful before you update. To actually get this update downloaded, what you wanna do, you can go to your Avid link, right? And if you go to show uh, my Avid link, and then you go to your products, you find your Pro Tools, and there will be a little orange icon right there that says update if it isn't already updated. You can go ahead and click that. It literally updates in about five minutes, and then you'll be off and ready to go. It's also important to note that this update is only going to be available for anyone with a current Pro Tools subscription or a perpetual license with the upgrade plan. So if you don't fall into any of them, you're still rocking with that bootleg Pro Tools from 2010, this ain't going to apply to you. One of the first places that you will notice new changes in Pro Tools is gonna be soon as you launch it and the dashboard appears. You'll see from here that you have new colored tabs for either opening and starting a Pro Tools session or actually jumping into Pro Tools Sketch. If you wanna see a full video where I go over the new features and all the tutorial on how to use Sketch in Pro Tools, drop down in the comments below and let me know, all right? But today, we're just gonna be focusing on a session. As a matter of fact, I'm not even gonna start a new session. What I'm gonna do, and I have open already, this is the Pro Tools test session. So they have demo sessions that you can use if you want to know how to navigate those, you simply go to your documents folder, go to Pro Tools. If you go to demo sessions from there, you'll see the can't get enough session that I created with Lydia that's available for you to check out. And then we also have the new Stratosphere Dolby Atmos demo session. Now the Stratosphere session, all you got to do is double click that. It'll open up to this exact same session that I'm working on right now. In order to be able to access the Adobe Atmos renderer, you may need to go to the I.O. setup. So I'm going to go to the setup menu, I.O., and this is where you'll find some more new differences. In the I.O. setup now, we have a Adobe Atmos tab where you will want to go ahead and enable the new internal renderer. So you'll enable it by just clicking that plus button here. And if you will also take note that you can still have access and use the external renderer for everybody who likes to use that. Today, we'll 
we'll just focus on using the internal renderer. I'm gonna hit okay to activate my internal renderer and this window is accessible just by going to the window menu and opening up the Adobe Atmos renderer. The shortcut for that is control command equal. So typically we're already used to command equal being a shortcut just to get between the mix window and the edit window. If you add control into that, well now we'll actually open up the new Adobe Atmos renderer window. Now this Adobe Atmos renderer window, if I play this session, you can now see all the Adobe Atmos channel. I got my objects, I got my bed up here, and I can see how stuff is moving and flying around my system. It's pretty, pretty cool, man. And again, this is just gonna enable us to work in Adobe Atmos immersive session so much more easily. So if you're not already subscribed to this channel, subscribe right now, because I'm obviously gonna be creating content on mixing Adobe Atmos and Pro Tools, especially because everybody got the renderer now. Let's take a look at some more new features besides the Adobe Atmos renderer. Also in that Adobe Atmos renderer window, you see that you got monitoring. It could be 5.1 monitoring, or if you're only using headphones, you can just switch to the binaural monitoring mode so that you can experience this immersive mix directly in your headphones, man. This is really cool. You also have a shortcut to the IO setup now, right here in the Adobe Atmos renderer. All you gotta do is hit that button and now we we have access to the IO setup and they'll bring us to our Adobe Atmos window. Now this makes it really easy to go ahead and start color coding paths. If you click to the left of any path, it'll open up a new color palette where you can go ahead and assign a color to that path. Now this is gonna make it super easy, even in stereo sessions, to figure out where things are routed. So if I go ahead, as a matter of fact, let me go ahead and start it. I'm gonna make a new session real quick. Now, a lot of time when you have drums in a session, you might want to create a drum submaster. So let's go ahead and do that now. Um, so select those tracks, hold shift and option. I'm gonna click on the output path. And I'm gonna say, just go ahead and route all of these tracks to the drum sub. In a simple session, that's perfectly fine. But check out what we can do with the IO setup. I'm gonna go to setup, IO. And then on my buses here, let's go to that bus tab. My drum sub, maybe I want to give this drum sub path a color like green, right? And by hitting that, boom, I hit OK. Now you can easily see, and this makes routing so cool. Now I can easily see that, hey, everything that's routed out to this green path is my drum sub. So in complex sessions, that's just gonna make me that much quicker in navigating that session because now I see, hey, the green path is a drum sub, the red path is my main output or whatever, right? So I could I could literally say that maybe, maybe I did want that to be, you know, my main output path or whatever. I could go ahead and go up to the setup IO and then object 11 and 12. Let's get that a path and maybe I turn that red so that I know that anything that's going out to that path is going out to my main, my main monitor path. This also works with sends as well, in uh, bus sends and output sends. So you can really get flexible and move around your session very easily by using these new color additions in the IO setup. They also have some special features for when you're working in the Adobe Atmos RAM for grouping and using the colors and the groups inside the IO setup. In the Pro Tools 2023.6 update, we gained the feature to add markers, not just to the rulers as we traditionally have, but also to tracks. Let me go ahead and show my markers ruler now. And I'm kind of giving this away now because you see, not only do we have one marker ruler, we actually have five new markers ruler. But let me just go back and just make sure that y'all understand how we can add rulers to, I mean markers to a track. So. I got uh, ruler markers, but if I wanted to add a, ru a, a marker to my track, and this could be something like marking a, a lyric or something that I needed to replace later in time, that'll just help me to be more focused and exact on the point in the track on where those changes need to happen. So for example, I could just hit this plus button, and then, since I'm on a track and I'm on that jump track, I could say, you know what, uh, fix a uh, lyric here. And then also I can add comments on what that uh, lyric is. Maybe it's I love you, okay? And now I can see that the, that the marker is here on fixed lyric. And if I hit the little comment button, I can also see what the comments is to maybe see and put the lyrics on. So you can do that on any track and any track, wherever this target button is, that is gonna be the track that is targeted whenever you are 
adding new markers via any of the shortcuts. So I could just say, you know what? That location three is I hate you, all right? And then here, if on this track, maybe I want to show the lyrics as well. Again, a very, very clutch feature. This can be done all throughout your session, wherever you drop your markers at and you want to add a new marker, uh, we love you, okay? We all about the love here. And of course, you can move these, right? But maybe you want to not just make markers on each track. Maybe you want to make markers for the music section or the dialogue section or the, the vocal section. Now, with the expanded markers, we can actually do that and you can add comments to those markers as well. So here's how we would do that. If I wanted to add new markers, I would just go to the track, um, go to the ruler view selector, which is the little drop down menu here, or you can always go to the view menu, choose rulers, and then choose which marker ruler you want to see. So let's show uh, markers two and three. And then I can come here to each of these marker rulers. I can even target them by hitting that little red target button. Then whenever I create markers by using a shortcut like enter on the numeric keypad, then Pro Tools will automatically know that I want that marker there. So marker three, maybe that one is for that marker's ruler three. If I want to say, you know what, uh, let's make that um, change the beat here and then... Um, I'm gonna just say, you know, call it break beat. Okay. Cool. So I got to change the beat there. And again, if I wanted to see what the comments were, I can easily hit that little comment button to show and actually see the comments. So you can now see that the markers are, can be really, really helpful, especially in large sessions and helping us navigate around. But that's not all. Pro Tools has also given us some controls on being able to filter and search for these markers in our session. So to do this, we want to open up the markers window. You can either go to the window menu and choose markers or memory location, excuse me, or hit command numeric five. Inside the new memory locations window, you'll see these new filters at the top so that we can actually filter. So not only do I want to see, hey, I want to see only marker four or memory location four. I can see that and it'll filter it out, especially if I have a long list of markers, because I think it's like 32,000 markers that are available now. So you can really go crazy with marking up everything in your session. Um, you can even filter out by name. So maybe I want to say, hey, you know what? filter um, lyrics, right? The any place where it says fix a lyric. And then I can see those markers, right? Or I can even filter out by the type and I can say, hey, you know what? Show me a marker or track name or even the marker ruler. So you got all of these different options that you now have available for searching and filtering your markers, which is going to make navigating your session that much easier. Did I also mention that your markers are color coded? So whenever you create Whenever you create a marker, you can choose the color of that marker and then using, in the, using the filter feature, you can filter down to that color only and see markers just based on the colors. There's even features that have been enhanced when importing markers from session to session. So whenever you're using the import session dialog box, of course, you can move markers from one session to the next memory locations. So I would... And you can choose to auto match them. So any markers that have the same name won't be duplicated. They'll be just matched and replaced. This new update also improves the interoperability between Pro Tools Sketch and a Pro Tools Session. For example, I have the choice now to bring in any MIDI loops as and keep them as MIDI so that I can keep on editing them as MIDI or I can just drag it and drop it onto an audio track or a blank section in my session to start working with it as audio and all of the processing that was done in Sketch will carry over so that it's easy, seamless transition from Sketch into a Pro Tools session. And of course, there are more updates and improvements to the Pro Tools software. I'll leave a link to the full release notes down in the description below. What was your favorite update? What are you looking forward to? For me, it's obviously going to be the Adobe Atmos integrated renderer, and I'm looking forward to more people mixing in immersive audio. I can't wait to hear y'all mixes, man. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this huge Pro Tools overhaul, and I'll catch y'all on the next video. Be dope.